So a couple things about graphing these types of equations. Uh, one thing we know, we've already done a bit of this in class, that uh, <clears throat> this is going to be basically centered at 0, 0, and then an offset of 5 in the x direction. So this gets out to 5, 0, back to negative 5, 0. Offset of 3 in the y direction, so up 3, down 3. And I just like to draw this so I can look sketchy. Uh, cosine and sine, it's going to close up on itself. So it's doing this. Notice in the x direction, <clears throat> let's see, it would start here. So it's really going this way. If I think about the x direction, cosine starts at the maximum 5, goes to negative 5, and then comes back. Uh, sine starts at 0, so it would start like here go up, down, and then back in the 0 to 2 pi. Now, we know how to graph these <clears throat> also in um, rectangular form. Like I know that the graph of this in rectangular form would be, let's see, x squared over 25, 5 squared, plus y squared over 9, which is 3 squared equals 1. So the way that I get from there to from here to there as I take advantage of the fact that I know that that cosine squared plus sine squared is one so I'm going to solve this for cosine and then square it so x equals 5 cosine x divide both sides by 5 but I want a cosine squared because I'm going to replace this with it so I'm going to square both sides so that gives me x squared over 25 is cosine squared. I can do similar work with the sine value. Divide the 3 and square it. And I get y squared over 9 is sine squared. So x squared over 25, right? Because this is cosine squared. I'm just going to substitute it in for it. Sine squared is y squared over 9 equals 1. And I've got that. Now sometimes <clears throat> the graph doesn't use sine and cosine. So let's say I have something like this. x equals 4 secant t and six, uh, y equals 6 tangent t. Well, I can't substitute it into this cosine squared plus sine squared because I have a secant and a tangent. But I can take advantage of the fact that I know that there are other Pythagorean triples, uh, Pythagorean relationships that I could use. And so let's see, I want a secant and a tangent. Tangent sine over cosine. Secant's 1 over cosine. So I'm going to divide everything here by cosine squared. We've seen this move before. So I know that 1 plus sine over cosine is tangent. 1 over cosine is secant. Uh, subtract the tangent from both sides. So it's that. That's my relationship. So let me think about that, how that can help me think about how to graph this. And I'm hoping that you don't convert it to rectangular every time, but you start to see kind of patterns on these and just start to recognize the form. Um, so let's see, divide by four, square both sides. So there's my secant squared. And my tangent squared, divide by six. Square both sides. <clears throat> so tangent squared is y squared over 36. Secant squared is x squared over 16. I'm just going to substitute those in. Let's see. Secant x squared over 16 minus tangent y squared over 36. Ah, that equals 1. That's familiar. That's a hyperbola. So my center is at 0, 0. I know that it's offset of 4 in the x direction. So this would be 4, 0, negative 4, 0. Offset is 6 in this direction, in the y direction. So 0, 6. And now since it's minus, instead of plus, I know that this is an inside-out ellipse. So um, it has asymptotes here and here. And the question is, does it go this way or does it go this way? Well, it's x squared minus y squared, so it goes this way. 
So there's that. And there's my sketch of that graph. Now, here's what I want you to notice with all this. Let's say that this had said uh, 3 plus 4 secant t and 5 plus sine t. Think about what that does when you add to a function. It moves it in that direction. So this would move this over 3 and up 5. So the center wouldn't be at 0, 0. It would be at 3, 5. <clears throat> and then all this would be like this offset of 4 in the x direction, right? And then I add 4 to the x, 7, 5. Subtract 4 from the x, negative 1, 5. And then I do the same thing with the y values. And the way that that changes this part where I was solving, I'm going to resolve these. Subtract 3, divide by 4, then square it. So see that this wouldn't just be x squared over 16, it would be x minus 3 squared over 16, which shifts it right 3, right? So we can still get there from all of these with a shift off the zero, zero. All right, give these a try, dig in as much as you can, and uh, do your best.